In today's show, we're going to talk about how to move SharePoint Online files and keep their metadata. So we're going to use the Patterns and Practices PowerShell and move files from point A to point B without losing their metadata. Should be pretty awesome. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And so in today's show, we're going to hop right in and look at using the Patterns and Practices PowerShell to move SharePoint Online files from point A to point B and keep their metadata, one of the most challenging things that usually you need a third-party tool for. Not saying third-party tools don't have their place, but at least if you have to do a little poor man's action on this, I'm going to show you kind of a quick and dirty way to move those around. And then once you learn how to do it in SharePoint, it's pretty easy to apply the same concepts for moving files, say, from your local file system or file share up to SharePoint Online. Pretty cool? Pretty cool. Here's my desktop. We'll jump right in here and we'll open up our friend PowerShell. And the very first thing we will do is our friend Start Transcript. Right? We all know that we use Start Transcript in order to um, keep a running record of everything we've done here, right? It's going to capture all the things we type in, plus all the outputs, so you have a, a history of what you've learned today. So as you solve problems, you'll have a log file. You won't have to remember what you did tomorrow when you start over. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing I want to do real quick is I just want to talk about what um, version of the Patterns and Practices PowerShell I have installed. So to do that, I'm going to do Get Module SharePoint PMP PowerShell Online and select Version. And you see I've got 2.16.17.06. That is the June 2017 version. The only reason I point this out is I found that uh, sometimes the Patterns and Practices PowerShell changes and my videos might not work anymore and it's because of an update. So at least this way you can kind of compare apples to apples. And if you ever find it doesn't work, hit me up in the comments. Tell me I need to remake the video. I'm always happy to uh, you know, take care of my subscribers. So, Okay, so now that we know that uh, what version we've got, what we're going to do is the first thing I want to do is jump in and connect to my PowerShell. So we will run this little line right here, right? Connect PMP online URL, my uh, SharePoint site collection, and then credentials is 0365. So I'm using the Windows Credential Manager and I have my credentials stored there. That way I don't have to type it in in front of you people. I know you want to steal it, but you can't get it. So, and we've also, we've got that same site open here in the uh, browser as we'll kind of reference this a couple times as well. Okay, stage is set. Uh, so the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to do a get PNP, oh, got to spell it right though, PNP list, and then I'm going to do, uh, or sorry, PNP list item, and then I'm going to do dash list is docs. That's the docs list I created. And so here you can see I've got four documents in there, IDs, titles, unique ID. So we've got some kind of sample data to play with. Can also take that commandlet. And what we can do is we can say, you know what, let's get PMP list item. And we can use this commandlet to get a specific item. So we get the first item, right, one with ID of one. So list docs. Oh, cannot tab complete the list names. You got to type those in. So we'll run that. You see it returns it. So now that we know that it's good, I'm going to hit up arrow, hit home, and just type in dollar sign truth equals that, right? So set it to a variable because I want to show you a couple of things. So there's that. We'll clear our screen off to move it back up. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to do dollar sign truth, and we want to look at a couple of the properties. And so if you type in dollar sign truth and then field values and hit enter, this would actually show you all of the different um, properties that have values, or all the different fields, I should say, and their values. So this is what when you're trying to figure out, hey, that value that I need, the thing I want to change, or what it is, what's it called, this is a great way, right? Because I know that right now I'm looking for the file name, so Todd Smells, and so I can see that that is the file leaf ref. Whereas if we scroll down a little further, and we see that file ref actually gives me the path to the document library, slash docs, slash Todd Smells dot docx, because I need both of those for my script to work. Um, also, you'd see things like, you know, if you had nested folders, things like that, be able to figure out where exactly the path you're at is there. So, very helpful. So, now that we understand that, we could do is dollar sign truth field values, and we'll do file leaf ref, right? We just saw that one. And then tab a couple times dot file ref. And so then there's the full, full path. So, those are the things that I need to know about the files in order to use them and move them here in a second. 
And all of this, right, I've covered moving files before in a previous video. Um, and this is not a rehash of that, right? That was a quick rehash. But in that video, we concentrated on how the script worked and what it did. In this script, what we're really trying to do is just add the metadata portion. So just uh, keep that in mind also. Okay, so now that we've done all that, let's clear our screen off one more time. And so what we're gonna do is in order to edit um, metadata, what you do is you use a set PMP list item. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, set PMP item, list item, list out of the docs, the identity is going to be one, right? So we're gonna edit that first one. And so dash values, then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do at squirrely brace created equals get date 12, 25, 2007 at 9 p.m. Oh, nope, we'll just do it like that. 1227, and we'll close the parentheses like that, and then we'll close the squiggly brace, and we'll hit enter. We'll wait a few seconds. And so then now if we go over here to my list, we'll click on Docs, we'll see that now we've got a uh, 1224 at 7 p.m. file, so that's the one we updated. Now, you're like, wait a minute, you typed in 1225. Keep in mind that time zones are in play here. So when I write the SharePoint, right, I'm writing to it in UTC, but my machine is in the Eastern time zone, so it's five hours behind. So that's why in the display layer, it is showing me 1224 at 7 p.m. because that's five hours from um, you know, midnight on 1225, right, zero, zero, zero. So if I wanted to avoid that issue, what I might have done, could just hit up here. And so for my create date, if you want to use the date and time, you got to put it in parentheses, or in uh, quotes. So Quotes 12 25 2007 space and then we'll do 9 0 0 p.m. and then close the quotes and hit enter. So then that runs and then if we went back over here again and did a refresh, we'll see this is at four, right? That nine minus five. So just keep that in mind depending on what time zone you're in, how you uh, UTC works for you, you may or may not have to comp um, compensate for that. Okay, so set PMP list item. That lets us update metadata. So in previous scripts, we've looked at, you know, copy PMP file lets us uh, copy a file from one directory to another. So now we should be able, we have all the pieces we need. Uh, we do have a Savannah document library here that is empty. I did add a color column to it and I ad edited the view to make created show up just because that's one of the fields we're playing with. So let's switch back over to PowerShell and let's grab our friend um, the script talk about what it does okay so we're going to copy this and we'll clear our screen first just to make sure we don't mess up we'll paste this in all right so target list equals savannah target lib equals slash savannah slash right and what it is is the two different places i use it it needs a different format so i just had two different variables made my life a little easier then I did dollar sign items equals get PMP list item list docs, right? Same thing we did earlier. So get all of the items in there. And for each item in item, so one time for each one, the source is going to equal item, right? So the current document, field values, file ref, so the short thing. And then target is going to equal target library, so Savannah in this case, dot item, field values, file, leaf ref. So that way we're recreating the folder structure if there is uh, one of those we need to deal with. So then we're doing a copy PMP file. Source URL is source, right, right here. Target URL is target, right here. And I'm doing a force, so that way if the file is already there, because I keep running the script over and over, for example, it'll overwrite it uh, if it already exists. Pretty straightforward. So copy file from point A to point B. So now we have it in two places. So then here I created something I did not get creative and I said dollar sign variable one equals item dot field values dot file leaf ref. Right? And this is the reason I'm not doing a move file because I need to reference that data. So what I'm doing is I'm capturing the value of that so I can do a copy grab, and then grab the old uh, source data. And so then I need to, this is a really hard part, and this is where I need to find the current list item. So I wrote the list item, but there's no real easy way to reference it. So what I had to do is I had to write a camel query, right? C-A-M-L, not C-A-M-E-L. I know I'm obsessed with animals, right? There's a pig and dog and all that back there. But uh, a camel query, 
And so that query is, you know, get PMP list item from the list target list, right? So that was Savannah. And query view query where equals field ref name equals file ref. Uh, value type text is var1. So that value I just put in here and then close out the camel query. That is nasty, nasty stuff. Um, I don't want to do like a full lesson on camel right now, but if you kind of break it down, it, it, it makes sense, right? Go find me, do a query where the field ref, uh, the field reference file leaf ref equals and then the same value as var1, which was the file leaf ref from the previous. So that's my way of getting the same file name out of uh, the list that I just copied in. There might be fancier ways to do it. That was my solution and it works. And who doesn't want to see camel, right? I like animals. So now that I have that var1 and the file all set, what can I do? Set PMP list item, list, target list, right? So Savannah, identity is the file that we just got out of here, yeah, right there. And for its values, I'm going to set the color of it, the color column to the same value that uh, it had in the old item. And then we'll set the create a date to a static time of 8 5 at 5 p.m. No idea where I came up with that. I just started typing. That's what came out. Um, if you're wondering about this at sign, what this is saying is the things in the curly braces here, return those as an array because the... Uh, Command would expect them to be an array. And so sometimes like if I'm doing this, I only have one item in there, but I still need it to be returned as an array. So I just always have dash values at and then curly braces and then put in the data in the middle. Um, last line here, uh, remove PMP file. And so here you can see I put a comment sign in front of that, right? The, uh, the pound sign, right? Um, or hashtag. And uh, so I put that in front there. And that just means don't run that. But if I had left that there, then it would have deleted this file after it got done moving. So uh, up to you if you want to uncomment that out in the script or not. So then you can see it moved these four files. And if we go over here and go to Savannah, you'll see that all those were moved. It looks like it took me four minutes to say all that. Uh, four minutes ago, they've all got a static date, but they've got the same metadata column color as they did in the other one. So pretty cool. Right, um, I, so I did it this way to show you a that I could do both um, static and uh, you know referenced data, right? So static being the get date and the reference being this one. Uh, but if you wanted to, you're like, hey, you know, that's great, but I don't want uh, eight five ninety nine as my create date. I want the actual items. Well, that's not too hard to do for you, right? So I can hit the up arrow. I can go back up here, and we'll take our get date, and we'll get rid of all that just like that. And so what would we say? We'd say, all right, dollar sign item dot field values dot created, right? So that's the created date on the current item. And then that's the, um, that should work. So let's hit enter. We'll give it a few seconds to think through. It's like chugging all my files. All right, and so then now as it goes, right, if we're doing refreshes over here, We'll see the file start to come over. So there's that weird 12.25 date, 6.16. We'll do another refresh, 6.16, 6.16. So now the metadata here is 100% match to the metadata over here. And so if you had other columns, right, you can update the script to use those. If you want to get uh, the modified date, you know, any of that type of stuff, you know, and you can definitely do that combination of some things might be static, some things might not be. Um, so the other awesome thing here, right, is really we're kind of done, but um, is you can also take the same concept, right, this same script. Oh, let me grab my mouse. There we go. And you could apply this to pulling files off of your local machine or off a file drive or off a file system, a file system, file share somewhere. You know, you can apply all these same concepts because it does. Your source doesn't have to be SharePoint. Your source could be somewhere else. Now. If you were going to, you wouldn't use copy PMP file, you'd use add PMP file uh, if you're pulling them off your local file system. And so I've done some other videos. If you check out the video, uh, the PowerShell section, I've done some other videos covering that. Or if you're like, man, I really want to do that. I wish you would just show me a video then put it down in the comments below and I'll do that. Uh, also in the comments, I'll put a link to all the different videos that you might need to, uh, you know, kind of assemble your own, own tool there. So 
but this should give you enough to do it. So hopefully you enjoy this and um, you know it's moving things in the right direction for you. Like I said, this is not meant to replace a third party tool which can do lots of things, can do lots of scale, but sometimes you just need a poor man's tool to move a little of this, a little of that. Here's your solution. Um, as always, if you wanna get a hold of me, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows, or we can work together through the old bold zebras. You know, whatever might work out for you. So thanks and have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording. <laughs>